Mortal Kombat Remastered or Arcade is an awesome new project for the Sega Genesis and Mega Drive and it breathes brand new life into this classic 2D beat-em-up. In today's show we're going to be taking a look at this stunning project as well as a custom box that I've built for the physical edition. My name's Mike. Ah! Get over here! Ah! Welcome back to the Retro Gamer Boy Show, and yes, we're finally getting round to previewing Mortal Kombat Arcade. This is a remaster of the original game that came out in the early 90s. Now alongside that, we're also going to be looking at a custom box that I've built for the game. Of course, it's the Retro Gamer Boy Show, we have to have something custom built there. I've built everything from a brand new manual, to the sticker that goes onto the cartridge, to the sleeve that goes inside the box, and we'll take a look at that at the end of the show. But for now, Let's check out Mortal Kombat Arcade, the remastered version on the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis. This remaster, or as the devs are calling it, the Arcade Edition, is one of the most comprehensive reworkings of a classic game that I've ever seen. Everything has been reworked. Animations, backgrounds, stages, characters, and even the audio. The work was led by Master Lin Kuei and a small team of developers who've done an outstanding job. Here's just a small example of what the team have changed from the original Mortal Kombat found on the Genesis. All the characters' endings have been changed to the arcade endings, every single sprite has been reworked to be closer to the arcade version, all the stages have been reworked improving colour, detail and they've added animations, over 80 sound samples have been added from the arcade version, your winning streak can now be saved using SRAM, the gameplay has had an overhaul improving delays and combat move timings, you can also choose to select arcade or original soundtracks, you can now soft reset the game during combat, there's a new training mode that you can unlock, there's a ton of hidden characters like Reptile that you can unlock, as well as a load of other secrets. Now with the full physical version that I've purchased, you also get the 1.2 update. And this includes improvements to Kano, Raiden, Liu Kang, Sub-Zero and Scorpion on the character selection screen, bringing them closer to the arcade version. The greenness of Goro's lair has been reduced and there's a new parallax visual added. They fixed Johnny Cage's skin colours and Scorpion's eyes on the mini avatars. They've reworked Scorpion and Sub-Zero's heads on the victory standing screens and Sub-Zero's had a number of tweaks made to his victory and stance poses. And lastly, they've removed the red border from Sonya's hair and shoes. The tweaks and improvements the team have made to the character's combat sets makes fighting feel more fluid, more connected. This was really evident as I was switching between both versions of the game for this preview. The original Sega Genesis and Mega Drive versions feel dulled down, as if I was playing with gloves on. Don't get me wrong, I love the combat of the original release, but now that I've played this remaster, I won't be going back. The combat mechanic tweaks are that good. Graphics are always a crowd pleaser for 16-bit games. Even though we know that gameplay is king, I still get hundreds and hundreds of comments each week talking about the visuals and graphics of a game, both good and bad. And for those of you who appreciate a well-crafted sprite, you won't be disappointed with this new version of the game. Everything's been reworked, and not just slight visual tweaks or colour reworks. Goro's Lair and the Throw Room are two great examples of the staggering improvements the remaster has made to the original. These two stages show an almost complete reworking of the originals. It's stunning to see the art direction of the original Mortal Kombat Arcade being so closely recreated on Sega's 16-bit console. And then there's the little things, like the monks clapping in the background stage of the courtyard, and the improvements in colour palettes to the fatalities, all adding up to one of the most impressive visual treatments of any Mega Drive game. I love the tunes that are produced by the Sega Genesis Yamaha sound processor. The digital tunes that emanate from it are some of the best ever found on a 16-bit console. Unfortunately for Mortal Kombat though, the original port, whilst getting its own original soundtrack, had a large amount of the sound design cut or dumbed down. Just listen to the difference in the punch sound effect. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
The improvements that Master Lin Kuei and the team have made to audio here are just outstanding and change the whole feeling of the game. Back in the day, players opted to play Mortal Kombat on the Mega Drive and Genesis because it hadn't been censored. With this arcade original soundtrack and audio design, there are now two reasons to make the Mega Drive the console of choice for your Mortal Kombat gaming sessions. Fight. Get over here. Excellent. Finish him. So now we've seen what Mortal Kombat Arcade Edition is all about, it's time to look at the physical edition and my custom box that I've built for it. So to create this design I used a mixture of photo bashing and painting. What you can see here is I'm turning on the levels but I actually did a, a load of painting as well. So I used the film Mortal Kombat logo assets and then painted over there, uh, did some work to the eyes, added scales to it, brought in clouds because I kind of wanted it to be like the rebirth of Mortal Kombat. Uh, on the back cover here, I carry across the cloud motif, but I wanted one of the characters to be like uh, coming out of the clouds, being made out of it. So I got Scorpion here, uh, we re reworked him, uh, did a bit of painting in there to make it look like he was part of the clouds coming out of this, like a force of nature. And then I've got my actual Mega Drive cover assets here. This has been painstakingly recreated. It's 100% accurate to what you would have found on the original Sega boxes. So when you order the game from the place that I ordered it from, you get this. It's a kind of cool looking box, uh, arcs back to the traditional artwork that you found, the advertising that you found for Mortal Kombat Arcade. And of course, this is what this ROM hack was all about, getting Mortal Kombat closer to the arcade version. You can see here the cartridge is uh, your traditional fake cartridge. So I'm just going to unscrew these screws here and we'll have a look at what the PCB is like inside. And as we can see here, actually the PCB is in a, a pretty decent one. We've even got like a, a little Sega logo uh, at the bottom here. I don't know if that's showing up in the video there, but uh, it's a, it's a well-crafted, well-put-together PCB. We're going to put these pieces to one side. Uh, now this is a cartridge. This is an official cartridge. I picked this up at a car boot sale. I picked up about 10 or 12 of them. They were just, just the shells. That's it. Um, so uh, I now use these shells to kind of repair old games that are a bit rubbish. You'll see here I've got some screws as well. I managed to pick that up on eBay. The PCB fits in perfectly and we're just going to tighten up these screws now on the cartridge. You need to get a special screwdriver so I've got a little toolkit here for maintaining my Mega Drive games and my, my Super Nintendo and other cartridge games. Uh, now, one thing that happens when you do this is it scratches the screw, so I just look, put a little bit of a marker over the top of those to make the screws look good. Uh, we've got an official Sega box. I have a few of these in reserve for replacements, and we're going to now put the cover, which I've had printed, off. 160 GSM gloss, full color. It's a lovely print. The printer that I go to is a local one, and you know you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between this and an official um, official cover. It's exactly the same type of paper, same type of weight, same type of printing process. And I'm <laughs> really happy. It, you know, it looks looks like an official uh, Mega Drive cover here, and you can see at the bottom here we've got uh, the logo of the guy who did the actual the ROM hack and and made all of these improvements possible. Now I've got this. Uh, second-hand manual that I got off of eBay for a pound. It's absolutely destroyed. So we're going to take the cover off here. You can see that the staples in the cover have rusted. Uh, so we're going to have to remove those as well. Uh, and we're going to use this to create an official manual. Now we'll lose the text on the inside of the cover, but that's, that's not too much of a problem. So we'll just work out these staples here. They're, re they're really rusty. And uh, actually, as I take this one out, one of them snaps because it's so rusty. 
Uh, but we got rid of those uh, horrible rusty staples. Just get rid of the rubbish here. And uh, we don't need this uh, damaged manual cover anymore, so we'll get rid of that as well. Right, let's clear off the work surface and get onto the manual. So here's the new manual cover. Again, really happy with the print. Um, it looks exactly like you would find a, uh, it looks exactly like an original manual. Um, I've got a set of staples here, so I'm just gonna separate these now. And what I'll do is I'll push these through. So I won't actually staple the manual. I'm gonna push these through the cover and then through the manual and then fold them. Uh, it's a little bit tricky this because the holes as you take off the manual can sometimes uh, not be aligned. And so it takes a little while just to force them through. Uh, once both the staples are through, I just have to close them down. So I've got another little tool here, which I use for prying open uh, screens and other bits of plastic, uh, but also good for pushing down staples. Uh, and here we go. Here's the manual. It looks awesome. It feels great. Again, the paper uh, the, the, this printer provides me is exactly the same as the kind of paper you'd get on originals. Right, on goes the label. And I've just used uh, a little bit of glue on here, water-based glue on here, so I can peel it off if I make any mistakes. Uh, and that goes on lovely and it looks awesome. Uh, and then just to finish off our manual, we're going to stick it into one of these uh, plastic sleeves. I look after all my manuals in these sleeves. It's great to have them in there. Uh, and now we can put our fully, fully boxed, complete in boxed copy of Mortal Kombat arcade version uh, together. Cartridge, manual, and the box. And it looked, I'm so happy with this. I'm glad I, 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 the traditional route looks great, but I really wanted to have this kind of more modern feel to the box. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I went for a more modern look because I wanted it to feel like this was a game that came out after Mortal Kombat 3 and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Now, if you like a more classical feel, of course, if you buy the physical edition, of which I'll have a link in the description below, you can have that more classic looking box. And Mortal Kombat Arcade, what a stunning remaster. But how does it hold up against the arcade version, the original Mega Drive version, and of course, the SNES. So Mortal Kombat Arcade, what an awesome, awesome remaster. I'll leave a link in the description below for where you can buy your own physical version. And of course, I'll leave a link to where you can actually get the ROM hack if you want to emulate this game. Now, before we go, I want to let you know about an awesome event called Extra Life. Now, Extra Life is a 24-hour gamathon being hosted at Arcade Club in Berry, and it's in aid of cancer research. 
If you'd like to attend or support Extra Life, then check out the pinned comment for links and details on the event and how you can support it. That's all for this week's show. We have a brand new show for you next Monday. And if you can't wait until next Monday, why not check out two episodes over here?